Hey folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Today I'm going to talk about how I select a goat for purchase. Kenny might tell you that I will just buy any goat that is for sale, and that is false. <laughs> there is a process, okay? Seriously, let's talk about it. But two important things first. Today I'm drinking an Argentinian Malbec and check out Clear Creek Farms too. They're also making a video on this topic and they focus on meat goats. So they'll have a great perspective for you if you're looking for a meat goat. And remember, this is just everybody's take on how they purchase goats. So if you have other helpful ideas, leave them in the comments. Come, come. First, let's talk about how you pick a goat kid. Because picking a goat kid is different than how you pick an adult goat. I've purchased most of my goats as kids, so this is the method that I use most commonly. The number one thing that we're going to look at is genetics. When I'm looking at genetics, I'm looking at the dam and the sire and the grand dams and the grand sires and even potentially farther back than that. I'm looking for milk stars, I'm looking for linear appraisal scores, and that's going to tell me if this is a good quality breeding pair. And that's the best I can do when purchasing a kid. Although you can look at a kid and sometimes see definite faults, so you would pass on them, a lot of times you aren't really going to see what they're, they will develop into until they're six months to a year old, maybe even older. So you really have to buy kids based on genetics. Milk stars and linear appraisal are a great tool to determine if you are buying quality stock. Now, a lot of times if you are buying goats from parents who have milk stars and linear appraisal, they're going to be more expensive. So another thing to do is look for somebody who's newer to breeding, but is buying good quality stock. So all of the, the grand dams, and the grand sires are good quality. You can go on the ADGA website and look back at the, at the lineage of these kids. I mean, I'm a great example of this. I haven't started linear appraisal and I haven't started milk testing yet. You know, time, kids, job, all that. I'll get there eventually, but I'm still buying good quality animals. So I'm not selling my goats for $800 because they don't have those features yet, but they're still good quality animals. Stevie Nicks was the first doe that I bought based on lineage. Let's take a look at her and see how I did. Alright, so let's take a look at Stevie here while she's standing up here and then we'll have Robbie walk her also. Okay, we can take my lamb out. You sure you can handle? Stevie is an example of everything going right when you pick a goat based on genetics. She has a long body, she's deep bodied, which means she can eat a lot and there's lots of room for her lungs and heart even when her stomach is very full. She's tall but not over height. She has a pretty smooth top line, just a little drop off at the tail, but definitely nothing extreme. She has a long neck and she has those smooth dairy features. She could probably be built uphill a little bit more, you know, a little more angled from from the back up to her shoulders and neck. Overall, really a quality animal. She also milks a good amount. She has nice size teats. Stevie's milked out right now, but you can tell she's got good teat size. She's got nice orifice size and her udder is nicely attached. Her escutcheon is not totally a U-shaped, but it's wide enough and high enough that her udder is going to be well attached after lots of kiddings. Now we're going to take a look at Honey Rider. Honey Rider is actually out of almost the same lineage as Stevie. Honey Rider's sire and dam are Stevie's grandsire and granddam. Now you'll see that Honey Rider just doesn't have the length that Stevie does. So initially 
this year I was thinking maybe I would breed her and sell her in milk, but then I started milking her. Her teat size is great, her orifice size is great. She's milking a ton for a first freshener who had a single. And her udder is extremely well attached. Like to look at it, you would never think the amount of milk that we get is coming out of there. So for that reason, I am going to keep her and look to breed her with a nice long buck and try to produce the kids that I'm looking for. So two different versions of what happens when you buy for genetics, but I still have two good goats. I mean, I'm gonna look to lengthen her kids, but her udder is great and she milks like a dream. You know, genetics, you still end up with a pretty good animal. Now, if I had the option to purchase either Honey Rider or Stevie, I would purchase Stevie. And that's because she has qualities that are most important to what I'm looking for in my herd. You've got to ask yourself before you buy a goat, what's the most important thing that you're looking for in your herd? And what's number two and what's number three? My number one is hardiness. My number two is milk. And my number three is show quality. So why is hardiness number one? Well, we live in a really wet area and goats aren't meant to be in a wet area. So I've got to pick ones who are genetically more likely to live well here. They're more resistant to parasites and you know, they're more able to bounce back. But how do you shop for that? You can't find it on a genetic record. What I do is I ask the breeder how they manage their herd. Are they somebody who seasonally is deworming their goats on a schedule? Or are they somebody who's running fecals and only treating as necessary and only the goats showing symptoms? I'm looking for somebody that's doing the latter. And I've seen a difference. There are some goats that I purchased early on before I knew that who breeders dewormed on a schedule and they were not nearly as hardy as goats that come from people who use the other methodology. Now, obviously with an adult goat, you can look at the genetics, milk stars, linear appraisal, but if the goat has already kitted, you can ask to milk the goat. See how easily they milk, see how much they milk, see how the milk tastes. That's a great way to pick a goat that's in milk. So All right, let's take a look at some of the things that I like about Zipper when evaluating adult, an adult goat. The brisket right here. You can see it a little bit better when she walks, but her brisket comes out in front of these front legs, which is what you want. Her top line isn't perfectly straight, but she also doesn't have a sharp dip down here at the tail, which is important. Oh, here comes a baby. Although Zipper's top line isn't perfect, she does have more of that uphill build than a lot of my goats. So as you're evaluating goats, I mean, it's really important to know A, what your priorities are, and B, what you want to improve about your herd. If you already have a great top line and you want to improve the escutcheon, then you buy a goat that has a better escutcheon and you cross those goats and you keep the doling kids that have both things that you're looking for. And that udder on zipper, yes! I mean, that's the biggest thing, right? Are they going to milk? And she sure does. She's also hardy because, well, even if they've got great milk genetics and great milk capabilities, if they're not healthy, they're not gonna produce very much milk. Before you go buy your next goat, think about what the priorities are for your herd. Things like milk production, show quality, hardiness, friendliness, size, brush destruction capability. Because listen, I mean, everybody's gotta earn their keep around here. And from there, that will help you narrow down where to start. If you intend to breed the goats, definitely think about what you have in your herd that you like and what you would like to change and use that to help you select the animals as well.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching and we hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.